In a world where quick fixes and magic pills dominate the news headlines. These days, it's the talk of TikTok. Tell both of these women say they don't have diabetes, but I just start dropping pounds left and right. It is literally the hottest drug in the country right now. In 2023, there was a major new player in the weight loss scene. And as a dietitian, I needed to talk about it. This new method or magic pill is making waves across the globe, particularly in 2023, and it's gonna do the same thing in 2024. TikTok views for this surpassed 1.2 billion last year. The company that produces some of these drugs made $8.5 billion in 2022 and will most likely surpass 10 billion in 2023, which is the year just passed. But what is the truth behind this rising star? Are we witnessing a major breakthrough or is it just another trend and quick fix in the complex conversation around weight loss? Today, we're diving into the realm of GLP agonists like semaglutide, the drugs that promise to change the game in weight loss. Ozempic, Manjaro, Wigovi, just to name a few. As a dietitian who helps men and women lose weight sustainably, it's important to share my views, which I have shifted over the past year, I should say. Keep watching as we uncover the layers, the science, the controversies, and my professional perspective on one of the most debated topics in weight loss today. Hey everyone, it's Andres here. Welcome back to my channel. This is the first video of the year. So happy 2024. If you're new here, hi. I'm a registered dietitian, sports nutrition expert and content creator. We're focused on helping parents lose weight and reclaim their health through education and science. So if you're into health and fitness and you wanna learn how to optimize everything around your health while losing weight in the process, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any new videos from me. This year, I promise I'm delivering on amazing content to help you support your goals and help you declutter a lot of the misinformation out there that I know can be overwhelming. I'm here to make this easy and simple for you. On that note, as a dietitian who's passionate about sustainable health, I've been closely watching the the rise of weight loss drugs and medications. They're making massive waves around the world and I figure I'll give you my take on this short video that will probably expand in more detail over the next few months. Now we will first dive into GLP-1 agonists, which is the class all these medications fall under, and then explain how they work for weight loss and blood sugar management. We will then explore the different weight loss drugs in the market and their growth, the research behind their efficacy, their side effects and their downsides, the cost implications, and I will give you my professional take on them. Now, spoiler alert, not actually what you might expect. Let's get started. First, let's talk about GLP-1 agonist. What exactly are GLP-1s anyways? GLP-1 stands for glucagon like peptide 1. It's a natural occurring hormone in our bodies that plays a key role in regulating our appetite and our insulin levels. GLP agonists are a class of drugs that mimic the action of this hormone leading to significant implications in weight management. Agonists, by the way, are defined as a substance which initiates and a physiological response when combined with a receptor. Now, this is kind of fancy to explain something similar and this is the way I like you to imagine it. It's kind of like a key and lock mechanism. Your body cells are full of them. In the case of GLP-1 agonists, they're a key that fits into a lock that activates that response that we just talked about. So how do these agonists work for weight loss? Think of GLP-1 as a diligent traffic officer in a very busy city of your body. Any idea why I might have stopped you today? When food enters your system, it's like a brush hour. Every Everything needs to be managed efficiently so everything can keep running smoothly. GLP-1 steps in, directing the traffic and ensuring that sugar is used correctly and not just stored away. It signals to your brain. It tells it that you're full, helping you reduce your food intake. So essentially, it puts a break on your appetite so you manage the amount of food that you consume. The magic of GLP-1 agonists lies in their ability to imitate this natural hormone. They prolong the feeling of fullness after eating. They reduce the speed at which your stomach empties, which keeps food in your stomach for longer, and even help your pancreas manage insulin more effectively. Your pancreas is essentially the organ that produces insulin. It's like having an extra highly efficient traffic officer in your body, ensuring everything runs smoothly and you don't overeat. This mechanism is obviously a game changer in the world of weight loss. It literally helps you be less hungry while managing your blood sugar better. Amazing, right? We will see. Now that you know how GLP-1 agonists work, let's get into the actual drugs in the market. In the past year, drugs like Ozempic, Wegovi, and Mount Jaro have gained significant popularity. They were originally developed for diabetes and they're now being used for weight loss. But why this sudden surge and change? Well, it's partly due to their promising results in clinical trials that show that these drugs not only help you manage your blood sugar, but you also lose weight when you take them. 
Now, when you pair these results with massive celebrity endorsements like Oprah, Amy Schumer, even Khloe Kardashian, among many others, you're going to see a boom in popularity around this. This is why in TikTok, these drugs are literally one of the most viral videos out there. Now, I don't consider celebrity endorsements or TikTok videos a good source of research, so let's see what the science actually says. When it comes down to the efficacy of GLP agonists, the research shows that weight loss happens. For example, this pivotal study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, participants who receive semaglutide experience an average weight loss of nearly 15% of their body weight over 68 weeks. Now, that's a crazy, amazing figure, especially in the realm of weight loss medications. Now, keep in mind, the study was funded by Novo Nordic, which is the company that produces Ozempic, which is one of the drugs or one of the type of drugs that are semaglutide. So it's something that you want to consider. Another study in JAMA, or the Journal of the American Medical Association, echoed this result. And it showed that participants using GLP agonists consistently lost more weight compared to those on placebo or other weight loss regimens. It's important to know that there is a ton of limitations here. And this is the most important one. Most of these studies focus on short to medium term use, leaving us with questions about the long term effectiveness and the safety, which is something that we're going to get into. So, so far, these medications sound promising. And and the research, whether they're pharma funded or not, shows that it can help people. But let's talk about long-term use. These drugs are not a one-time fix. The creators of these drugs, they say that they require ongoing treatment. You stop the medications and the benefits often diminish or the weight may return, which raises an important question about sustainability, which is what I always talk about in some of my videos when it comes down to weight loss. Would you want to take a weight loss drug for the rest of your life? I know I wouldn't want to. Now, are there side effects? Yes, there have been a lot of reports of side effects that have gotten people to stop taking them altogether. Common ones include things like nausea, diarrhea, and constipation. And I was one of the people that felt like so sick and like couldn't like play with my son. I was so skinny and I was just like, like he was throwing a ball at me and it was just- But more severe issues have also been reported. For example, there's been reports published like this one that showed the development of acute pancreatitis in some of the people taking this, which is a serious condition. Also, there's a piece in the New York Times which have published a ton of articles around this, but this one highlighted individual cases of severe gastrointestinal or GI problems. Just a couple of months ago, there was another report of a woman by the name of Trish Webster, who died of acute GI complications after taking several months of Ozempic and another weight loss drug called Sashenda. And this is not just news outlets reporting this, which I know you may have some strong feelings about. I also talked to many people looking to lose weight every day and every week. And I have received the reports from at least three people who had to stop taking these medications because they had a lot of gastrointestinal complications. And I came back from a vacation. I injected myself with it. I went to lunch with like a girlfriend a few days later and she's like, I'm not really eating anything. I'm so nauseous. I'm on a Zempic. So it's important to balance the promising results of these GLP agonists like semaglutide with the risk and the fact that you have to take these medications long term for them to continue to work. Now, as a dietitian, my focus is always on what's sustainable and health promoting in the long run. That's why understanding both the bright and the dark sides of these drugs, it's essential for anyone to consider them as a weight loss solution. Now, let's talk about an aspect of these weight loss drugs that it's often overlooked but critically important, which is the cost. These medications are not cheap. We're talking about a price tag that can range from hundreds to over $1,000 per month. And here's the catch. Many insurance plans don't even cover them for weight loss purposes, meaning these can be a very hefty out-of-pocket expense for those seeking these treatments. Now, when you compare this to other weight loss methods like dietary changes, exercise programs, or even surgical options, which will be a topic for another video, the financial burden can be considerably higher with these drugs, mostly because you have to take them for a long time. Imagine paying hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per month just to keep the weight that you lost and not allowing it to come back. I mean, it's a rent, it's a mortgage. And I'm sure this new year with newer clinical trials underway, more and more insurance companies will start to cover the cost of this medication specifically for weight loss. But with that said, is that the long-term solution for the weight problem that exists here in America and the world? Now, here's my take. Initially, I was quite skeptical about this weight loss drugs. In fact, I'm going to be brutally honest here. I don't think I've ever shared this in a video or anywhere at all. A former client of mine whom I helped support for years started on it and she told me about it. And my ignorance at the time called her out on it publicly for taking it, which cost our relationship, not only as friends, but also as a client of mine, because I didn't really understand the implications of taking this. Now with more context, I wish I had done things a little bit different. I have never liked and still don't 
the use of drugs or weight loss drugs or medications for managing weight loss. My approach has always been about sustainable long-term health changes. And medications like this, while effective, can offer results that are often tied to continuous usage. Once you stop, the benefits can diminish, and this doesn't really align with my philosophy of lifelong health and wellness. It's like any diet. Now, with that said, I do recognize their potential for certain groups, particularly those at higher risk of chronic diseases related to obesity. In such cases, these medications can be an incredible tool in a broader health management strategy. In fact, it can help prevent death for many as it relates to chronic conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and beyond. But my concern grows when it comes down to their use for what I like to call vanity weight loss. For people looking to lose 20, 30, 40, or 50 pounds who are perfectly healthy, taking weight loss drugs to lose weight to fit in a wedding dress? I'm sorry you may not agree with me on this, but I just simply can't support that. Here's the ideal scenario for these weight loss drugs, in my opinion. If you take it, seek nutrition counseling and coaching to help you learn how to eat properly and balance to maintain the weight that you're losing through taking these drugs. In our programs, for example, we teach the framework built around four pillars of health, nutrition, lifestyle, movement, and mindset. These weight loss drugs are a tool to help you eat less, but they're not really helping you build a better lifestyle for yourself that will allow you to create better habits that you can sustain for good. You need education and support to be able to do that. I'm currently working with two clients who are in these medications. I did not recommend those. And I will tell you what I told them. Taking these medications while learning to create a healthier lifestyle for yourself will definitely fast track your results. But most importantly to me as a coach is will it help you keep those results without the need to continue to take these drugs in the future? And if the answer is yes, then they can definitely be a helpful tool. There are companies like Weight Watchers and even Noom. Weight Watchers stock making major gains this week, surging nearly 80 percent. Well, Noom is just the latest point. company getting into the weight loss drug business, announcing today that users will soon be able to get prescription obesity drugs. Obviously, imagine the financial gains these companies can expect to have when they're not offering a faster way to deliver results to their customers. I wouldn't be surprised if other companies like Octavia started to add weight loss injections in their meal packs. Even in doctor's offices these days, the moment your BMI is considered obese or overweight, which is a terrible marker of health, by the way, your suggested weight loss drugs as the first line of defense. Instead of, let's say, well, go see maybe a nutrition coach or a specialist. And then you will see raging wars in comment sections of viral posts about their doctors recommending this to them and, and they're just supporting that. It's commissions that get you into paradise. You know what we bill on a full dose script? What? 40 grand. A year? A month. Well, at the end of the day, it's big pharma, and I'm sure these doctors are helping a ton of people, but are they prescribing this left and right, getting a huge financial benefit? There's a very large group of people that can benefit from it. Don't get me wrong, but how do we draw the line here? As we come to the end of this video, I'm going to reiterate one key point. I'm not against anything that supports long-term health, even weight loss drugs. In fact, I call myself diet agnostic because I think any diet or method, including taking drugs like this, can help anyone. As long as it's something that can either be sustained over time or that has a plan to follow for sustainability after. Honestly, I'm a little worried about this year and the usage of these drugs, mostly because more and more people will stick them without any type of education and support. And I firmly believe that in a couple of years, we will see a lot more data on the long-term effects of these drugs, along with reports of maybe even people regaining the way back after stopping it. There's already reports about that happening. It's the unfortunate truth. It's always been the case for any type of quick fixes, and this is not any different. Now, I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on weight loss drugs? Have you or someone you know tried them? What was the experience like? Share your stories in the comments below. Your insights honestly may really help the debate on this and, and help other people who might be considering some of these options. If you found this video helpful, please hit subscribe for more insights and tips from a registered dietitian. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. Happy 2024 and I'll see you in the next video.